My name is Tristan, and I recently joined the Hasura team as a technical evangelist. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about some of the new connectors we have in the works. One of the most exciting things about this concept of data connectors is that it really opens the door in terms of what precisely we can consider a connector. Traditionally, when you think of Azura, you probably think of instant GraphQL APIs on top of your Postgres database. As many of you, our loyal community members know, we're already doing a lot more than that, connecting to things like BigQuery, MySQL, MongoDB, and others. The question isn't what data should you put onto your graph. At Asura, we think the question is, what shouldn't you? Assuming that we can all agree that making developers' lives easier, allowing them to iterate faster, is generally a good thing, then giving developers easy access to all their data in one place is a no-brainer. With Asura data connectors, pretty much anything can become a data source. No SQL, no problem. Can you build a connector for a CSV file? Sure can. What about a vector database? Those are a hot topic right now, right? How hard is it to build a connector for one of those? I'm here to report it's not too bad. Take a look at this connector I've been working on for the Quadrant Vector Database. Before we dive in, let me give a brief explanation of how vector databases differ from traditional databases. In a traditional database, we tend to look things up based on unique identifiers. Get me customer with ID 1, for example. In a vector database, however, we don't normally look things up explicitly, but rather we search for things that are similar. When you like a movie, you don't want recommendations for that same movie. You want recommendations for movies that are similar. How do we know what's similar? Long story short, and thanks to a lot of math, that's what the vectors are for. When we create a vector embedding, we're basically capturing the isness of the thing we embed, represented as numbers. Lucky for us mere mortals, there's plenty of free and open source software available to handle this. In this example, I've taken a data set of recipes I found on Kaggle that includes things like the steps to make the recipe and an image for each recipe. From there, I used some open source models on Hugging Face to create embeddings for both the text and the images, and then I uploaded all my data points into Quadrant. After that, it's as simple as plugging in the connector, and voila, we can query our vector database. It's quite quick, too. You might notice something a bit weird, and that each of my collections have these additional arguments for positive, negative, and vector. In this case, that's how we can perform a vector search. For a recommendation engine, it's as simple as passing in an array containing the IDs of positive and negative data points. If you wanted to perform a vector search, you could embed your data and pass the entire embedding vector to the vector parameter. Say I like this first recipe, miso butter roast chicken, but I'm not a big fan of the second one, the crispy salt and pepper potatoes. I can query for recommendations of other recipes I might like, passing in the positive and negative examples. As you can see, each of my results comes with a score, which can essentially be treated as a percentage match. What's especially cool about this is that I can also apply filters on top of this. Maybe I want recipe recommendations, but since I have some spare lemons lying around in my fridge, I'd like recipes that have lemon in the name. While I'm sure I could make lemonade, the recommender thinks that based on my preferences, I might be better off with roasted squash with lemon tahini sauce. As cool as this is, seeing it from graphical isn't nearly as much fun as seeing a demo use case. So you know I had to build one. What's especially neat about this demo is that I created a multimodal recommendation engine without using multimodal embedders. I discovered a novel way to concatenate embeddings into the same latent vector space. If this interests you, keep an eye out as I'll be putting out a blog post that goes into more detail on this soon. 
The main idea is that recommendations for text only or image only oftentimes perform poorly. Here's an example. In my data set, one of my data points had mismatched photo. If I like this macaroni and cheese, my top recommendation, while labeled as southern mac and cheese, is very clearly a plate full of fish. And I'm not sure what's going on with this third photo here, but if that's the picture on the menu, I don't think I'm ordering anytime soon. Getting recommendations based only on image doesn't do much better. While I can certainly see how these images all look similar, they don't quite hit the mark when it comes to providing quality recommendations. The multimodal recommender, however, does a great job. These recommendations both sound and look like our input. In this case, we have the ability to dial down each modality. As you can see, if I turn the image weight all the way off, we get the same results as performing a text-only recommendation. I can specify exactly how important each modality is in determining the end result to recommend to the user. Pretty cool, isn't it? That's not the only thing I have to show you today. What's great about data connectors is that you can build them relatively quickly. I've also been working on a connector for Terso. Terso is based on LibSQL, which is a hard fork of SQLite, created by some of the same people who brought us SeelaDB. Terso turns SQLite into a distributed database that works on the edge. It's a really cool concept with lots of potential applications. Having done work on SaaS applications before, I really like the idea of being able to create a database per tenant that you can affordably host and replicate in regions that specific tenant needs. On top of that, the developer experience is great because it's lightning fast. When developing locally, I'm frequently seeing sub 10 millisecond responses, which while it makes sense, it's nice to never be waiting for things to load. This connector is still in the works and you can expect to see and hear more about it in the near future, but I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek. As of right now, these connectors only have support for querying and they're still in an alpha state as we've been working to develop them alongside our upcoming V3. We're planning to add mutation support in the future and we'd love to hear from you which of the two you're most excited for. So drop that in the chat. In the meantime, Feel free to check out the repos on GitHub, as these connectors are both open source and written in TypeScript. We've got lots of really cool things in the works here at Hasura, and I want to invite anyone in our community to feel free to reach out to me. I'll be dropping my email in the chat, and I'm excited to get to know more of the members of our community. As a technical evangelist, it's my job to keep my finger on the pulse in terms of what you, our community, wants. So if you have a question about the Terso or Quadrant connector, or maybe there's a different connector you'd really like to see get built, please do reach out. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a productive day, and most importantly, get shipped done. See ya.